Good afternoon and namaste everyone. I welcome all the participants from India and others from the globe. I'm really pleased to welcome you all on behalf of the Ministry of Rural Development, Government of India and Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, Government of UK. Today, we are really fortunate to have with us Honorable Minister Shri Giriraj Singh Ji, Minister of Rural Development, Government of India, and Lord Ta Tariq Ahmed, Minister of State for South Asia and Commonwealth in the UK Foreign Commonwealth Development Office. Their presence is an indication of the strong partnership that has been forged between the two countries for tackling climate change issues. It is indeed a major milestone that we, we will achieve today with the launch of CRISPM tool. We are fortunate to work with the Ministry of Rural Development Government of India on their flagship program, Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme, which is not just important for India, but globally. Countries around the world are acknowledging NREGS best practices and want to draw learnings from it with the view to replicate them in their own context. I am happy that FCDO, through its technical support, were able to make contribution towards enhancing climate resilience outcome of the scheme on the ground. Climate information is widely viewed as critical for building resilience to evolving climate hazards and enabling adaptation to climate change. Whether in the form of short-term weather forecast, seasonal forecast, or projections of future climate change. Climate Resilience Information System and Planning Tool for Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Scheme, the CRISPM tool as we call it, has been developed with the support from FCDO's Infrastructure for Climate Resilient Growth Program. This is delivered in partnership with the Ministry of Rural Development. Let me briefly introduce you to the ICRG Technical Assistance Program. In partnership with Ministry of Rural Development, Government of India, the program is helping improve abilities of poor and vulnerable people to cope with climate change impact. This is done by integrating climate risk management into national, natural, rural, natural resource management, the NRM structures that are built under Mahatma Gandhi Narega. That in turn results in improving ecological services that supports livelihood of poor households. More specifically, ICRG interventions at national and sub-national level seek to facilitate more effective investments in the NRM structures that are built under Narega. This will help improve groundwater recharge, micro-irrigation, soil and water conservation and plantation. The process adopted by ICRG program in mainstreaming climate risk management into social protection is informed by theory on climate risk assessment and decision making. Vulnerability assessment and climate projection studies were undertaken as part of the technical assistance provided under ICRG and data was used to prioritize uh, my, uh, MGNREGS work as well as the design of climate resilience work. I would now request Ritu, senior researcher within the climate change research group uh, in uh, IIED to present the context of uh, CRISPM tool development process. Over to you, Ritu. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Daljeet, and namaste and a very good afternoon to all of you. As Daljeet mentioned, this is indeed a major milestone for all of us, the foundation for which was laid almost one and a half years back under the leadership of Joint Secretary, Ministry of Rural Development. During this process, we brought together those who are generating climate data to those analyzing it, to finally those who use it for decision making both at the level of community as well as uh, at the level of MGNREGS functionaries. It is in this effort that development of CRISPM tool uh, was, uh, was taken to fruition with partnership from more than 12 government agencies, including Indian Meteorological Department, Indian Institute of Tropical Metrology, National Institute of Hydrology, Indian Institute of Forest Management, Department of Science and Technology, and finally, the most important, the state rural development departments. And we, are in, we also integrated the collaborative bottom-up approaches to realizing this objective of climate risk-informed early action and planning. So without further delay, I will now request our Honorable Minister, Shri Giriraj Singh Ji, uh, the Union Minister for Rural Development and Panchayati Raj, Government of India, and Lord Tariq Ahmed, Minister of State for South Asia and Commonwealth in the UK Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office to kindly officially launch the CRISPM tool.
climate change has emerged as a major threat. In India, the rural economy bears the brunt of this global crisis, as almost one third of the country is either drought prone or arid. Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme is the world's largest public works based social protection program that provides a rights based social safety net to India's rural poor by assuring 100 days of guaranteed wage employment to every rural household. Its core interventions, especially wage employment and rural NRM infrastructure, have the potential to build household level climate resilience within the rural economy. The 2019 circular issued guidance to integrate climate information in MG and REGS planning but lack of understanding and access to climate change information posed a difficult challenge. Thus, despite tremendous success, its climate resilience outcomes have been limited. To support climate risk informed MGN REGS implementation, climate resilience information system and planning tool for MGN REGS CRISPM has been developed. It's a web and mobile phone based GIS aided tool that facilitates integration of climate risk information in planning, implementation, and monitoring of the scheme. It is an amalgamation of bottom-up and top-down approach to collate all relevant information and make it available in a simplified format for usage by the community. CRISPM has three key components. GIS Assisted Asset Planning Tool integrates GIS information with historical and projected climate data and generates a plan of possible climate resilience strategies, types and design of assets. The community then modifies the plan based on their local, traditional knowledge and experiences. Community-based planning and monitoring allows remote sensing-based monitoring and crowdsourcing data on MG and REGS asset and beneficiaries. The CRISP-M tool was piloted in 18 village panchayats of Niwali block in Barwani, Madhya Pradesh. The objective was to understand ways in which a climate risk-informed GIS plan could be combined with community-level processes to ensure effective, local-specific and need-based planning, decision-making and monitoring. The application has come from us, we get to know the weather. Like the water when it comes to the water, how to do 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 the water, and the weather is very good for us. When the rain was coming, we were making the application for the first time. When the rain was coming, we were making the application for the first time. Now the rain is coming online, so now the rain is coming in the rain, like the water is coming in the water set, like the water is coming in the water. और इससे गांव में किसानों को फायदा हो रहा है सिंचाई के लिए जैसे मान लो फसल रहती अगर ज़्यादा पानी होता ये एप्लीकेशन के माध्यम से हमको पता चल सकता है कि खराब होगी या नहीं मतलब पहले से ही पता चल जाता है कि ये क्या होने वाला है तो उसके कारण हमको खेती करने में फायदा होता पहले हमको जानकारी सिर्फ और सिर्फ बरसात के बारे में ही हमको जानकारी मिलती थी कब पानी गिरेगा कब सूखा पड़ेगा खेती कैसे करनी है अपने भूजल स्तर कैसे बढ़ाना है पानी का बचाव कैसे करना है जो पानी जो बेहतर जो खराब चीज़ें जो नदी नालों में जा रहा है वो यूज़ में नहीं आ रहा है क्रिस पैम अपनी एप्लीकेशन जो है उसके माध्यम से हमको पहले ये कहाँ पर कैसे डैम बनाना है कैसे वाटर रिचार्जिंग पेड बनानी है उसके माध्यम से हम इसको बता सकते हैं इस ऐप के थ्रू कि कहाँ पर कैसे रिचार्ज कर सकते हैं उसके अकॉर्डिंग हम हम उनको किसान को बता पाएंगे कौन सी फसल लगानी है किस टाइम ड्यूरेशन में कौन सी रबी की है कौन सी फसल की है The pilot conducted in Barwani has shown great promise. It produced a number of positive results, helping community members to make climate smart decisions. Feedback from the pilot has been used to further refine the tool, which will be deployed in two districts in the next phase of development and then across seven states in the rollout phase. धन्यवाद माननीय मंत्री जी का क्रिस्प एम टूल के लोकार्पण के लिए थैंक्स ऑनरेबल मिनिस्टर्स फॉर लॉन्चिंग द क्रिस्प एम टूल आई विल नॉट रिक्वेस्ट ऑनरेबल मिनिस्टर श्री गिरिराज सिंह जी यूनियन मिनिस्टर फॉर रूरल डेवलपमेंट एंड पंचायती राज गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया टू काइंडली डिलीवर हिज इनागरल एड्रेस माननीय मंत्री जी आपके इनागरल एड्रेस के लिए हम आपको सादर आमंत्रित करते हैं डियर कलेक्स पार्टनर एंड पार्टिसिपेंट आई एम प्लेज टू ऑफिशियली लॉन्च the climate resilience information system 
एंड प्लानिंग टूल फॉर महात्मा गांधी नेशनल रूरल एम्प्लॉयमेंट गारंटी स्कीम लॉर्ड तारिक अहमद मिनिस्टर ऑफ स्टेट फॉर साउथ एशिया एंड द कॉमनवेल्थ इन द यूके फॉर एजिन कॉमनवेल्थ एंड डेवलपमेंट ऑफिस है ज्वाइंट अस टुडे ऑन द ओकेजन ऑफ दिस लंच हिज प्रेजेंस इज मैटर टू जॉय टू अस एज यू नो महात्मा गांधी नेशनल रूरल एम्प्लॉयमेंट गारंटी स्कीम इज द लार्जेस्ट and most ambitious social security and public work program in the world the mahatma gandhi narega program is playing an important role in the covid pandemics it is also recognized as one of the k government initiative and delivering the climate change adaptation benefit and meet meeting goal under the nationally determined contribution and the sustainable development goal 2030 target the minister ministry of environment forest and climate change recognize mahatma gandhi narega as one of the 24 k initiative to address the problem of climate change while the simultaneously improving the livelihood of the poor i would also like to recall that the february 2021 during the united nation framework convention on climate change union government told about the mahatma gandhi narega contribution of sequestered carbon uh, was the assist at 62 million ton of co2 equivalent in 7 2017-18 from the cumulative work implemented as a study indian institute of science estimated that the total mean carbon at the national level through the mahatma gandhi narega the cumulative carbon shink created by mahatma gandhi nareg narega is projected to be 281 metric co2 in 2020 uh, 2025 and 561 metric co2 in 2030 this study demonstrated significant carbon sink potential of mahatma gandhi narega mahatma gandhi narega scheme already now being used as a mechanism to deliver climate resilience of the various project feature like geo tagging and direct benefit transfer have ensured that the scheme reach the intended the beneficiary the global climate risk index 2021 rank in india 7th most vulnerable country climate change impact this so that the india is india is to uh, climate change and uh, disaster it is becoming the important consider to climate aspect to the mahatma gandhi narega planning delivery the implication the crisp m tool will help us the m the climate information in the gis based planning and implementation of mahatma gandhi narega climate change is integrated in india development strategy and india has been a fortuner in taking ambitious climate action crisp m tool is a future step toward unlocking climate resilience potential of mahatma gandhi narega and in due course be aim to convert this scheme from world largest social protection program and also become world largest climate resilience 
program we appreciate british government and all the stakeholder who support our ministry in developing this tool and i hope implementation of crisp m will open up new possibilities for our rural communities to deal with the issue of climate change thank you jai hind jai bharat thank you so much sir uh, honorable minister for your very inspiring speech uh, i will now request honorable lord tariq ahmed minister of state for so south asia and the commonwealth in the uk foreign commonwealth and development office to kindly deliver his launch statement thank you sir thank you shri jiri raj singh ji for joining me as we launch this important tool which will help millions of people adapt to the impact of climate change a challenge not for one country alone but for all of us this crisis is growing with terrible consequences for the most vulnerable people across the world to put it plainly and simply it is robbing them of their lives it is robbing them of their livelihoods and wiping out critical infrastructure extreme weather has caused more than 11000 disasters over the past 50 years alone leaving damage worth 3.6 trillion dollars these disasters are becoming more frequent and indeed more intense in the first 7 months of this year alone in 2021 india experienced two cyclones a deadly glacier collapse in the himalayas a sweltering heat wave and devastating floods during the monsoon season and as we all know tragically hundreds of people died and millions more were left homeless every time a disaster hits it damages our collective global efforts to reduce poverty and indeed promote shared prosperity for all in just 2 weeks time the united kingdom will host the cop26 climate summit alongside italy in glasgow in scotland the world must grasp this opportunity to take immediate action what can it do by reducing emissions by preventing loss and damage from disasters and of course importantly protecting the most vulnerable in society our collective action must include investment in early warning systems advanced planning and early interventions the rate of return on these investments is very high the global commission on adaptation suggested that early warning systems saves lives and assets worth at least 10 times their cost just 24 hours warning of an approaching storm or heat wave can cut the damage by a staggering 30% yet despite these clear wins one in 3 people around the world are not covered by such early warning systems that's why i want to recognize india's global leadership in this very important area thank you for putting adaptation and resilience at the center of your climate action plans and indeed your development agenda let me assure you the united kingdom is committed to working hand in hand with you on this important initiative Furthermore I applaud India's commitment to advancing the coalition for disaster resilient infrastructure the CDRI everyone in the world deserves access to basic services and the chance the opportunity to work and prosper so this work to put climate resilient infrastructure in place could not be more important or indeed more timely as a founding member and co-chair of the coalition we will work closely with you and other members on this important initiative another example of our strong partnership as we face this global challenge is our joint work through the mahatma gandhi national rural employment scheme reaching right across india the scheme is having a positive progressive life changing impact 
on those covered. It's helping poor and vulnerable people to cope with climate change and protecting them from weather-related disasters. This impressive new tool we celebrate today, the CRISPM, is the latest example of this great work, supported by the United Kingdom's Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Office. This web and mobile phone-based information system will help government agencies and indeed communities themselves to make smart, lasting decisions. It will give them real-time information when droughts are coming, providing early warning and boosting their ability to prepare and mitigate effectively. This tool, simply put, will save lives. It will protect livelihoods for millions of people across India. I therefore recognise everyone involved in developing this great initiative, this incredible tool, because this tool will ensure that people's lives are changed. And it's important to recognise and indeed celebrate its launch today. Let me further assure you that the United Kingdom remains committed to continuing this valuable partnership work with India as we look forward to COP26 and, of course, beyond. Building on our joint progress, the United Kingdom is working towards an ambitious international campaign on adaptation and resilience. India has an immense amount to contribute to this goal through its own experience and capacity and success. And it's only through working together that we can help each other, but also, importantly, we can help the world adapt and help protect many more lives, build livelihoods, strengthen communities. It is through working together we can, and if I may borrow Prime Minister Narendra Modiji's words, take forward the approach of trusteeship towards the planet. We owe it to our future generations. And therefore, I wish today's event every success. Thank you. Thank you. I would now request Mr. Sinha, Secretary, Ministry of Rural Development, to launch the panel discussion and share his opening comments. Over to you, sir. Honorable Minister for Rural Development and Panchayati Raj, Government of India, Shri Giraj Singh Ji, Honorable Minister of State in the UK's Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, Lord Ahmed, colleagues, partners, and participants. As you are aware, that Mahatma Gandhi Narega is among the largest public works program which combines social protection, small infrastructure development both for livelihood as well as for common facility development and climate adaptation, all rolled into one. Although Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme has succeeded in reducing rural poverty and marginalization, climate change has emerged as a new challenge. It's a global threat, but impacts are localized. India is said to be the seventh most vulnerable country to climate impacts as per a global risk index. This is going to impact India in many ways, but among those which will hit India the most as per an Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology model of 2020, the major ones are less precipitation, 6% less in 2011 as compared to 1951. More frequent dry spells, 27% more in 1981 to 2011 as compared to 1951 to 1980. And higher frequency of localized heavy rainfall and temperature rise, which may rise by 4.4 degree centigrade more by 21, 20, uh, by the end of 21st century. These are going to impact rural areas and citizens the most as they impact its more, most productive and useful assets with topsoil, surface and groundwater availability, vegetation and other natural resources. 
it is therefore extremely important for public schemes for example this scheme to factor in the changing climates into its function else it will hit life livelihoods biodiversity and natural endowment very hard which may further degrade the natural resources it is therefore becoming more and more important to consider the climate aspects in the mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee scheme planning delivery and implementation this scheme by its very design of community based consultation and decision making priority of works of drought proofing water harvesting and conservation land development flood control drainage development flexible budgeting responsive to local employment needs is ideally suited for a natural resources augmentation based development uh, to recap some of the key features it is mandated to spend 60% of the funds on the agriculture and allied works not more than 60% uh, 40% of the work uh, amount would be spent on material components of the work it prioritizes 65% of funds on natural resource management works in 2129 water deficit blocks it is estimated that from its beginning in 2006 rupees 3.5 trillion has been spent on nrm works alone approximately 30 million water related ecological assets have been created in which 29 billion cubic meters of water have been impounded it is playing a leading part in the national campaigns for water conservation starting from its localized avatars to large scale campaigns such as mission water conservation in 2016 17 jal shakti abhiyan of 2019 and 2021 apart from state specific com- campaigns in convergence with multiple stakeholders it is already recognized as one of the major initiatives of the government of india for delivering climate change adaptation benefits and uh, meeting goals under nationally determined contributions as honorable minister stated we have specifically mentioned that planning and design of works under mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee scheme should take into account impacts of climate change with the view to ensure resilience of vulnerable rural communities the development of this m tool will support the community and the scheme functionaries in integrating climate information in the planning of an asset and ensuring that asset created are viable in changing climate in context as well as monitoring their impacts here i would like to emphasize that climate resilience is not about integrating climate information we are contributing towards uh, climate resilience through our uh, the program by strengthening village level processes our aim through this program is not just to create climate resilient asset but develop climate smart villages by its focus on local governance uh, the scheme takes decision regarding the nature and the choice of work where each work site selection is made in open assemblies of the uh, village community and ratified ratified by the uh, uh, village local body called the gram panchayat most of the works undertaken in the program are related to water conservation drought proofing and land development that have a direct bearing on reducing vulnerability to climate change and this process has been enhanced in the last 7 years that this government has been in place a uh, number of studies reveal that the creation of community assets have increased groundwater levels irrigated areas cropping intensity crop yields and income of farmers the soil organic carbon and water holding capacity in dry lands have also increased significantly with consequent increase in crop yields and stable returns uh, the most important direct benefit is employment itself uh, during the summer months which increase household income to that extent also it protected the people from the impact of changing climates uh, most of the water conservation drought proofing and land development activities provide multiple environmental services for example farm ponds 
also help in ecological generation and the creation of livelihood opportunities in the village economy. The impact of grassroots planning, implementation and utilization is visible in terms of enhanced groundwater recharge, increased forest coverage, increased land productivity, higher vegetation, etc. in many impact studies of Mahatma Gandhi Narega across India. In a major study by Indian Institute of Science researchers, it was reported in 2017 that livelihood vulnerability index post Mahatma Gandhi Narega related works uh, declined. The benefit of Mahatma Gandhi Narega activities in one village go beyond the geographical boundaries of the village. For example, afforestation and desilting of percolation tanks have increased groundwater levels in the neighboring villages, particularly the downstream villages. The climate informed GIS watershed planning through CRISP M will further contribute towards this objective. In our quest to ensure it, GIS based watershed plans have been prepared for about over 170,000 gram panchayats out of about uh, 270,000 gram panchayats on the basis of data available from various uh, geographical uh, and other databases. What will change from adoption of the CRISP-M tool is the ability of the communities to see the impact of different climate parameters on the natural endowments and other built up environment and infrastructure. This will give to the village communities a huge fillip to make judicious decision, efficient use of resources and appropriate prioritization. It will help demystify the best science in the service of the people. However, we do not stop at merely augmenting natural resources through Mahatma Gandhi Narega uh, and uh, ensure climate resilience, but we complement and augment those with investments and capacity building of the communities and farmers by establishing convergence with multiple stakeholders in different uh, through different uh, interventions, for example, zero tillage natural farming, raised blade plantations, uh, 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 system of rice intensification, system for wheat intensification, precision irrigation, stress tolerant climate resilience agronomy and so on. This ensures that life, livelihoods, natural resources, water resources stay protected in the face of changing climate, even though we live up to our commitment to the world in its fight to mitigate the impact of and adapt to the changing climate. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Sinha, for setting the stage for the panel discussion. I would now turn to uh, Ben Webster. He's the head of Secretariat for the Risk Informed Early Action Partnership to share his thoughts on early warning early action and the value of climate information services. Ben. Thank you, Daljeet and excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Namaste, good morning, good afternoon. And thank you for the invitation to take part in this event. Congratulations to the Government of India and partners on the launch of this innovative tool. Um, I'm here to represent the Risk Informed Early Action Partnership, which was launched in 2019 at the UN Climate Action Summit in order to help take risk-informed early action to scale. We've seen progress in recent years on integrating climate information services and improved forecasting um, to be able to take early action. But in 2019, this partnership was formed to bring together governments, civil society, international organizations, and the private sector as well to really see these approaches taken to scale. And therefore, I'm delighted uh, to be here for the launch of CRISPM. Um, I come from a humanitarian background, working with the Red Cross and other humanitarian organizations, and I'm therefore passionate about finding more effective and efficient ways to support people who need assistance, who are impacted by hazards and disasters. And that's why I was keen to be involved in the launch of REAP, the Risk Informed Early Action Partnership, uh, which is trying to use these technological advancements and developments to benefit humanitarian action in particular. But what is clear to me is that humanitarian needs are vast and the system, the international system is vastly overstretched. And therefore we really need 
to integrate these approaches into national mechanisms and systems, uh, policies, plans, procedures, and so on. And that is precisely what CRISPM is looking to do. One of the world's largest uh, social protection mechanisms is now being adapted in the face of the ch changing climate to be able to take anticipatory and early action. And this is incredibly exciting. And therefore, we would love to uh, welcome the government of India into the partnership to work with the UK and IIED and many other partners so that we can learn from each other and really see these approaches taken to scale across the world. In India alone, millions of people will be safer from disaster, but our intention is to see 1 billion people safer from disasters by 2025. And therefore, we are keen to integrate this learning within the partnership and share with many other governments and actors who can benefit from these approaches. Um, this is how we will successfully adapt to the changing climate. So congratulations today, and we look forward to working with you in the months and years to come. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. I would request Claire Shakya, Director of Climate Change Research Group, International Institute for Environment and Development, IIED, to please come in now. Honorable Ministers, esteemed Secretary, friends and colleagues, good afternoon. I'm delighted to be here with you at this august gathering and to have the chance to elaborate on how the tool you just heard about was developed. I do not need to tell you that predicting the monsoon has huge importance for India, a country where a good monsoon has huge impact on national GDP. The high average annual rainfall sounds good to other countries, but there is huge variation in rainfall patterns across years, seasons, and this vast country's regions. India is not alone in this. Ethiopia, for example, is exactly the same. So many countries in the developing world are. However, the monsoon is particularly tricky. Two thirds of the rainfall takes place in less than 90 days. Most water is lost in runoff, which could be stored in wetlands, lakes, aquifers, or man-made reservoirs to increase resilience to drought. The high dependence on rain-fed cropping makes almost 70% of India susceptible to agricultural drought. Overexploitation of groundwater, lack of conservation efforts, and low storage capacity of surface water leads to inadequate water availability for irrigation, increasing vulnerability to hydrolo hydrological drought. And the global climate models do not cope with the role the Himalayas play in the weather in this subcontinent. So global climate model outputs are not particularly great for the monsoon. And yet communities need better climate information, short-term, long-term, seasonal forecasts and early warning systems to protect and promote livelihoods with changing weather patterns. Building resilience to current and future climate change is hampered by a lack of quality climate forecasts. But improved forecasts alone will not drive improved resilience on its own. People need to be able to access the information in a form that's relevant to the decision they're making. And it needs to arrive in time for the decision and to have the resources to act upon it. Access to high quality, relevant and timely forecasts and other climate information can significantly improve the quality of decisions under social protection programs like NREGS. And this would mean the increased effectiveness of NREGS to build climate resilience among poor and vulnerable communities. In the development of CRISP-M tool, we adopted four business unusual principles for delivering climate information. The first, understand the current landscape of climate information, how it is collected and shared, who shares it and how often. In India, there's a strong history of climate data collection and monitoring, providing an excellent base for climate forecasts. Historical data can help us understand which models best represent the monsoon. And in India, there is also great expertise both individuals and institutions, the Indian Meteorological Department, the Indian Institute for Tropical Meteorology, the National Institute of Hydrology, the Indian Institute of Forest Management, and Madhya Pradesh Council of Science and Technology. There have been great advancements in geographic information services and in remote sensing. But like much of the world, there's still space to improve collaboration and the co-development of climate information services by experts with decision makers. So we invested in bringing together the institutions generating climate data, those undertaking climate data analysis, and the government organizations and communities responsible for decision making. So two, the second principle was to co-develop tools for drought warning, drought early warning and climate risk management tools and guidance with concerned government agencies and communities. 
As I say, we brought together these 12 government institutions ranging from those involved in data generation, those working on data analysis to the final users of data. We facilitated their interaction, providing them with support to enable, enable them to co-develop these tools. This helped embed approaches and capabilities within their systems to ensure information emerges and flows to the right people at the right time. And the third principle was effective communication of climate information. The limited usability of climate information emanates from its poor communication, the format in which it's made available, how it's made available, and how well the end users, both government agencies and communities, can interpret and use it for decision making. I studied climate science as an undergraduate and often find I have to really focus my brain to interpret many seasonal forecasts. So our efforts are directed towards bringing end users to the center of the process, putting their decisions at the center of how climate information is expressed. Then we can design the climate information products according to these specific requirements and ensure the products are communicated through the channels that are um, best used to reach them and trusted by decision makers. Fourth principle, creating a climate information and decision support module. So climate change is defined as a wicked problem because of its uncertainty and complexity, but uncertainty does not mean inaction. The issue can be dealt by integrating both top-down as well as bottom-up approaches. A top-down approach includes assessing the cause-effect relationship between climate change projections and the impacts and risks, looking at the range of possible climate futures, but preparing to protect lives and livelihoods through these possible futures requires information on who is vulnerable to these climate risks and how they can be addressed. We are covering this gap by complementing the top-down approach with the bottom-up. We're integrating local information through participatory processes, allowing communities to use that local knowledge in the decision-making process. While the real experience of the CRISPM tool under NREGS will emerge over time, our learning so far indicates the immense potential of reimagining climate data governance data management and communication for supporting climate resilience amongst the poor and the most vulnerable people in rural areas. Possibly the greatest value of all has been in creating climate risk-informed early action and decision-making systems. So this is the start of a journey. Improvements will be needed as we learn, but in a country with so much talent, it is an exciting journey indeed. Many thanks, and may I wish you the very best for the Duchera and Desai celebrations. Uh, thank you, Claire. We will now move into the panel discussion with our national discussants. I would first like to invite Mr. Kamal Kishore to share his views. Mr. Kamal Kishore is a member of the India's National Disaster Management Authority and the Indian co-chair of the Coalition of Disaster Resilient Infrastructures Executive Committee. We request you kindly share your views, sir. Thank you very much. It's indeed uh, uh, very heartening that uh, this uh, innovative tool, which will potentially improve the lives, uh, build the resilience of millions, is being launched on the International Disaster Risk Reduction Day and just a few weeks before the uh, COP26. So congratulations to uh, colleagues and friends who worked on this tool. I think I just want to highlight uh, three things uh, and connect back a little bit to what uh, Ben Webster was saying about uh, taking um, early warning and um, improving access to early warning for, for, for people. Uh, before that, um, we have five things, three things. Number one, it shows us uh, that how you take science to people, you know. Um, Claire's remarks, she was talking about, you know, looking at uh, climate forecasts, seasonal forecasts, even for scientists, um, interpret them for, uh, for application. And this is a classic example, Chris M, of taking it, taking science to the people, uh, presenting the outputs of scientific work in a format that it is actionable, usable, and understandable by people. And the second thing that it characterizes is, which is very important in the context of emerging, uh, impacts, emerging and observed impacts of climate change at the local level. So it localizes uh, information which can be used for decision making. So it's really in a sense that the underpinnings of this really um, uh, characterize what we've learned in this area of work. It really sort of is built on best practice 
uh, over this that we have learned over the last uh, two decades or so. Uh, now, coming back to REAP, I, I really do hope that we can develop a strong partnership with REAP and see how we can think imaginatively to take early warning to scale, not just for a few hazards, but for many hazards, not just for one uh, type of um, uh, hazard, but uh, many hazards, not just one type of user groups, but many types of user groups. Uh, in India, we've made uh, great progress in improving cyclone early warning, particularly on the east coast. I think we have some issues with uh, Mr. Kamal's um, connection, but thank you, Mr. Kamal. Um, I would now like to invite Mr. Shan Mitra. He is the head of the infrastructure and urban development at the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, Government of UK. Uh, although he's speaking as a national discussant, but he brings a very wide international and regional experience. Uh, he led the design and implementation of a wide portfolio of programs specifically aimed at enhancing climate resilience in a wide range of sectors. So, Shan, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Ritu, and um, greetings to all the participants and the honorable ministers. Um, I'm honored to be uh, speaking on this panel and uh, delighted that the UK FCDO, we've been able to partner with uh, the Ministry of Rural Development on uh, such a, a landmark uh, initiative. Um, so, I mean, climate adaptation is quite central. I mean, we know it's central to India's climate and development uh, plans and goals. It's also central, as we've heard, to the UK's COP objectives. So it's, for these reasons, it's an important focus area under uh, the UK's uh, India bilateral uh, partnership. We've heard, I think, from um, uh, Honourable Secretary how uh, India's uh, uh, vulnerability to climate impacts and the fact that it's ranked seventh in the Global Climate Risk Index. I don't think I need to labour that point. Everybody will understand the range of uh, impacts that India's uh, affected by. Um, and I think we heard an, a, a very good example from uh, Lord Ahmed about the landslides and flooding in the Himalayan region recently and the, the, the glacier breach in Uttarakhand, which I understand has uh, swept away two hydropower projects as well as reportedly leading to the deaths of 200 people. So just a, a very specific example of how these disasters can affect infrastructure and lives and livelihoods. Um, clearly, as we've heard, early warning systems and advanced uh, planning have great potential to mitigate and reduce these losses through the provision of accurate short-term, seasonal and long-term information to communities and government agencies. But I would stress the fact that the word can uh, mitigate. I think as we've already heard, um, there have been significant shortcomings in the way that uh, climate science is currently used uh, uh, and in adaptation practice. And this has resulted in quite low uptake in many cases of such information um, due to one, one factor being the disconnect between producers of information and users. And secondly, the, the way in which information is packaged and communicated. Um, so that's just by way of background. Um, just to say a little bit more about the UK's response and how we want to work in these in this area with India in particular and globally. I, I would identify perhaps three uh, principles. One is that in working on climate adaptation and resilience, we want to uh, uh, ensure that our work uh, really makes a difference to strengthening the, the livelihoods and resilience of the poorest, the poor and the most vulnerable. Secondly, we want to make sure that we have an impact on a large scale, not isolated projects. So some of the ways in which we do that are through, for example, working on, we have in the past and continue to work with and support state governments and cities on integrating and embedding climate resilience and adaptation to their overall development planning and budgeting. We also work with private investors, financial institutions and regulators on integrating climate risk into financial decision-making. The third principle 
uh, I'd like to highlight is green recovery from COVID. So I think the, the interesting and attractive thing about this work that we've been doing for a number of years now with MORD on uh, NREGS has been that it really, tar it really meets all of these criteria in a very, very clear uh, way. Clearly, NREGS targets the most vulnerable households and communities. As we've heard also, NREGS is one of the, uh, if not the largest public works programs in the world. So it clearly offers potential for impact on a very large scale. And I think as we also heard from the minister, it's been a very important tool in COVID recovery. So, so working with NREGS to incorporate more sustainable and green practices is very much in line with, with uh, green recovery uh, from COVID objectives as well. Um, now, turning to CRISP-M, the CRISP-M tool, as part of our work with NREGS, I think one of the attractions of that is that it really addresses these needs that have been alluded to and which I alluded to earlier, the, the, the need for uh, better information uh, to enable communities and households to better prepare for and respond to uh, climate impacts. Uh, what I would also say is that taking all that into account, uh, investment in early warning and in climate information services is one of the most uh, one of the most attractive investments that governments can make in adaptation, and indeed is a crucial public good, and we should see it in that light. This is quite well documented. So FCDO and the UK UK government ourselves have conducted quite a comprehensive. Uh, evidence review of uh, investments in climate. And it's clear from that that investments in early warning and information can offer some of the most, uh, the, some of the highest benefit cost ratios of all climate adaptation investments. They can also offer very high positive impacts on poverty and gender, provided these users are actively considered and involved in the communication communication and use. Uh, this evidence review also highlighted that there is an important caveat to this. Um, we shouldn't automatically assume there'll be high uh, benefits. Uh, it does require that investment takes place across the whole climate information chain. So from forecasting through to users. So taking into account the need to invest in the, the provision of information, but also how it's how it reaches users and how it's then used by those users. Uh, it also requires institutional capacity and uh, government ownership. And I think as we've heard, CRISP-M has very strong features that I think provide a very strong confidence that these caveats, that these conditions will be fulfilled. The co-development approach that we've heard about from Claire Shakia uh, means that we've got a very strong uh, strong assurance that what comes out will be embedded into government systems uh, and it will also uh, it will also uh, meet the needs and be embedded in the way that uh, information is used by the end users so that the knowledge will flow to those people in ways that meet their needs we've heard also about the the communication tools that are being invested in so i think very strong reasons to believe that these caveats, these conditions that are needed to be fulfilled will be fulfilled, and this will be a very high impact investment. Um, what I would like to see though, and, and I'm sure this will happen as the work is rolled out and piloted, uh, important to continue to invest in the monitoring and evaluation of this. Um, so to ensure that we can track how the information is used, the uptake, and how this information is then uh, leads to decisions. What are the decisions, the new decisions that are, that are that are made on the basis of this information and are those leading to better resilience? I think it's a very exciting opportunity to actually generate knowledge and learning which will be of value not just with India but globally. So for these reasons I think you know we're really really very excited to be part of this um, and you know, in closing, I'd just like to, again, congratulate uh, the government of India, all the many state 
government agencies and central agencies which have been involved and IIED for their work, technical work on this. And we're very much looking forward to sharing this journey with you uh, and uh, to share, helping to share through REAP and other platforms this, uh, this, the lessons from this with other countries internationally. So let me stop there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sean. Uh, well said. You know, we do have a provision for undertaking monitoring and as evaluation of this tool as we move forward. So a good suggestion, and we will take that on board. I would now like to invite Dr. Alok Chaudhary. He is the principal, uh, senior principal scientist and the head of the GIS and the IP division at the Madhya Pradesh Council for Science and Technology under the government of Madhya Pradesh. Uh, over to you, Dr. Alok. Well, thank you, Rituji. Mani Mantri Ji, Gamir Vikas, Ema Panjayati Raj, Honorable Lord Tariq Ahmed Ji, Minister of State Government of UK, and respected secretaries, all my colleagues and other friends. See, I'll start my talk with the Prime Minister's direction, which was given during the National Meet on Space Technology on 7th November 2015, where he directed to use space technology, especially the contours generated by satellite images to be used for watershed management and planning. MPCST, especially the GIS wing of MPCST, is working hard since past 20 years in this particular field. And we are generating various maps which are being percolated down to the panchayat level. And uh, that is why probably one of the reasons why agriculture in the state has grown up at to a, at a, at a vast level. One of the reasons, not the exact reason as such. but the experience which we have gained in the last various years on the watershed management, planning, monitoring, and evaluation that has helped us in making this CRISPM a good tool to be used at the field level to have a bottom-up approach. I won't take much of the time, but I feel that as many of the major institutions which are involved in this particular project will make this project a very good success. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Chaudhary. I would now request Mr. Rohit Kumar, Joint Secretary, Ministry of Rural Development, to share his closing remarks. Thank you, sir. Over to you. Honorable Union Minister of Rural Development and Panchayati Raj, Government of India, Shri Giriraj Singh Ji, Lord Tariq Ahmed, Minister for state for south asia and the commonwealth in the uk region commonwealth and development office respected secretary rural development sri nagendranath sinhaji and all esteemed panelists and dignitaries and participants i am extremely delighted to share that our ministry under the program of mahatma gandhi nregs have already developed GIS based plans for 182,000 cluster of villages that is we call Gram Panchayat out of total of 269,000 Gram Panchayats that is around 68% and that we have prepared with the help of remote sensing technology based on ridge to valley approach and recently our honorable minister has also launched a new portal called Yukdhara with the help of Department of Space, Science and Technology, which will enable us further to strengthen the GIS planning for rural areas. Now, the launch of CRISP-M tool, which have been developed by joint collaboration of FCDO and Ministry of Rural Development Government of India, which will definitely help providing important climate information climate information in the gs based planning and implementation of this mahatma gandhi nregs it is a further step towards unlocking climate resilience potential of mahatma gandhi nregs and in due course it will aim to convert this scheme from the world largest social protection scheme to world's largest climate resilience scheme at this moment 
I would like to thank our Honorable Minister of Rural Development and Panchayati Raj Government of India, Shri Giraj Singh Ji, and Lord Tariq Ahmed, Minister of State for South Asia and Commonwealth in the UK region, Commonwealth and Development Office, for jointly launching the CRISP M tool. I would also like to thank Shri Nagin Nath Sinha Ji, our Rural Development Secretary, Government of India, for putting up opening remarks and context for the panel discussion. Sir, your guidance during the launch was very helpful as always. On this occasion, I take the opportunity to thank Mr. Ben Webster, Head of Secretariat for the Risk-Informed Early Action Partnership hosted at International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, IFRC. Ms. Claire Sakya, Director of Climate Change Research Group, International Institute for Environment and Development, IIED. Mr. Kamal Kishore, Member, National Disaster Management Authority, NDMA, Government of India. Mr. Shantanu Mitra, Head Infrastructure and Urban Development, Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Office, FCDO, India. And Dr. Alok Chaudhary, Senior Principal Scientist and Head, GIS and IP Division, Madhya Pradesh, Council of Science and Technology, MPCST, for giving their valuable time and taking part in such a interactive panel discussion. Last but not the least, I also thank Ms. Daljeet Kaur, Climate and Environment Advisor, FCDO, Ms. Ritu Bhardwaj, Senior Researcher, Climate Change Research Group, IIED, Mr. Dharambir Jha, Director, MORD, Mr. Amrinder Singh, Joint Director, and Mr. Sanjay Kumar, Deputy Secretary, MORD, for coordinating the whole launch along with my team from Ministry and making this event a success. Thank you very much to all of you. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, and uh, really, from on behalf of both FCDO and IIED and on behalf of MORD, we would like to sincerely thank Honorable Minister Shri Giriraj Singh Ji, Union Minister for Rural Development and Panchayati Raj, Government of India, and Lord Tariq Ahmed, Minister of State for South Asia and Commonwealth. Uh, from UK government uh, for joining us today and launching the CRISPM tool. Uh, thank you also to Secretary Ministry of Rural Development and all our panelists and speakers. Uh, and in the end, I would just like to mention that the realization of this vision of CRISPM tool would not have been possible without the continued guidance and the advice that we received from Sri Rohit Kumar, Joint Secretary, Ministry of Rural Development. Uh, sir, your strategic input and direction really helped us in realization of this vision for CRISPM, we would also like to thank and extend our sincere thanks and gratitude to Mr. Dharambi Jha, Director of MORD. His constant support and input was instrumental in development of this tool. We would also like to thank our partner organization, in particular, Dr. T. Thomas, uh, National Institute of Hydrology, and Mr. Lokain Thakkar. He's the senior scientist from EPCO. And finally, all our team members at MP Cost and IID, particularly Rashi Abilashi, Mohan Reddy, uh, Insha, Amit, uh, Abhishek, and uh, and from uh, our team, Ali Renton. Uh, thank you all so much, and uh, Namaskar. <laughs>